Okay, here's the clock. <laughs> yes, I am a minute late, but who cares? Okay, so this is a YouTuber by the name of Etesan Gulam. And he made a video called Challenge to All Questions, uploaded on July 17, 2020. Actually, I'll hold it here so you can hear it better. Apologies for the last uh, 14 years, ever since uh, 2006. Ooh, nice chronology. And, um, he has a challenge, we're going to get into that part. Relax, we'll get into it soon. His video is less than four minutes long. I uh, have been you know, arguing against Christianity and promoting Islam for uh, the past about 10 years. You know, I've been in various debates and stuff like that. And here's my challenge to any Christian who's watching this video. This is the important part. Uh, any Christian apologist or casual Christian I am willing to finally stop fighting against Christianity. And I'm willing to convert to Christianity if any Christian, any Christian out there, um, whether they're subscribed to my YouTube channel or they're just watching this video randomly, if any Christian can prove that Jesus was resurrected, oh, I will convert to Christianity and I will denounce this now. And not only that, but I'll admit that I'm just a false prophet. Okay. So all we have to do, so all I have to do is that. All I have to do is prove that Jesus came back from the dead. Shouldn't be hard. So if any Christian out there can prove that Jesus was resurrected, I will convert to Christianity and admit that the world is a false prophet. If any Christian can admit that. You know, you might be saying, why, well, why are you jumping to Christianity? Why not atheism? The problem is because I don't agree with atheism. I think there's too much evidence to support the notion of a creator or a notion of a god. That the universe just couldn't have begun randomly. Something must have caused the universe outside of space, space and time. Uh, because of space and time, managed to exist something outside of space and time must have started space and time. So that's why there's too much, there's too many, uh, there's too much arguments and too much evidence against atheism and stuff. So take that, all the atheists who say that there's no evidence against their point. Etan, Etashan Gulam clearly said that there's too much evidence against their, uh, your, your point. And again, he only, he only talks about the atheists that say that at the universe, space and time began random. He doesn't speak. He doesn't talk about the fringe ones, the completely scientifically illiterate ones, that say that the universe it always existed. Those people are fringe, they're of scientifically illiterate, that's craziness. In, in fact, maybe atheism itself qualifies as craziness. I think it might, given that the definition that given for a crazy person by the odd ones out. So this is my channel. Ooh, so he, oh, so he, this Muslim mm, gladly tells us what uh, an atheism is. I look forward to your responses. I challenge to any Krishna. Whether they're subscribers to the YouTube channel or they just, they're just watching this video. I don't need to subscribe to him, good. Jesus was resurrected, I will convert to Christianity and I will um, admit all of this is a so I look forward to responses, and I've been fighting my best for the past few years, but now I'm going to So if any Christian can prove it, without being just disputing some of the shit and all the information, without, uh, uh, without bringing in, uh, bringing honest information um, that I can analyze and stuff. And if I can't refute the evidence that you're presenting, that you just, if I can't refute the evidence, or if I can't refute your information um, uh, pertaining to the resurrection of Jesus, then I will refer to Christianity. So I'll, I'll take your information, I'll analyze it, then I'll see uh, whether um, the facts hold up uh, or your arguments hold up against the facts or not. And if your arguments are solid and if I can't refute them, and if they conform to the facts, then I will convert to Christianity um, if you can prove the resurrection of Jesus. So, I look forward to your responses. Any Christian watching this, I look forward to your responses, and I look forward to your 
argument and your evidence to show that Jesus was resurrected. Because as Paul says, you're not thinking that Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain, and our preaching is in vain. So the whole Christian movement, uh, Christianity rests on the resurrection of Jesus. So I look forward to your uh, responses here. Thanks. Oops. Now this is going to be quick. I told that to Sean that I would make and post this video prior to the time it, uh, to 7.20. It's currently 7.06, so I have 14 minutes to... And... Oh, good. He has an email address that will be useful. Well, because I'm going to need to contact him personally. Now, now my evidence will mainly be drawn from two sources. Five Undeniable Proofs of the Resurrection by Alan Parr, and Why Should I Believe in Christ's Resurrection by iGotQuestions.org. First, we need to know that it is a fairly well-established fact that Jesus Christ was publicly executed in Judea in the first century AD under Pontius Pilate by means of crucifixion at the behest of the Jewish Sanhedrin. No mention of Pilate, but A. The non-Christian historical accounts of Flavius Josephus, Cornelius Tacitus, Lucian of Samatosa, and Mamedes, and even the Jewish Sanhedrin corroborate the Christian eyewitnesses of the important historical aspects of the death of Jesus Christ. As for his resurrection, there are several lines of evidence that make a uh, compelling case. The late juris jurisprudential prodigy in international statesman Sir Lionel Luku, who of the Guinness Book of World Records fame for his unprecedented 245 consecutive defense murder trial quote, epitomized Christian enthusiasm and confidence in the strength of the case for the resurrection when he wrote, I have spent more than 42 years as a defense trial lawyer appearing in part, many parts of the world and I'm still active in practice, I've been fortunate enough to secure a member of successes in jury trials, and I say unequivocally that the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so overwhelming that it compels acceptance by proof which leaves absolutely no room for doubt. I'm going to skip over to these two paragraphs, the first line of evidence for Christ's resurrection. To begin with, we have demonstrably sincere eyewitness testimony. Muni and I have only about 10 minutes left. Early Christian apologists cited hundreds of eyewitnesses, some who documented their, their own alleged experiences. Many of these eyewitnesses willfully and resolutely endured prolonged torture and death rather than repudiate their testimony. The facts attest to their sincerity, ruling out deception on their part. So they, they were telling the truth. The only question is, did they actually see? So they weren't lying. According to the historical record, Acts 4, 1 to 17, Pliny's letters to Trajan, X 97, etc., most Christians could end their suffering by simply renouncing their faith, but they didn't do this and continued to proclaim Christ's resurrection and to death. Granted, while martyrdom is remarkable, is not necessarily compelling. It does not validate a belief so much as it authenticates a believer by a believer. What makes the earliest Christian martyrs martyrs remarkable is that they knew whether or not what they were professing was true. They either saw Jesus alive and well after his death, or they did not. This is extraordinary. If it was all a lie, why would so many perpet and treat it given their circumstances. I wouldn't why would they all knowingly cling to such an unprofitable lie in the face of persecution, imprisonment, torture, and death? Among the most illustrious of the professed eyewitnesses were the apostles. They collectively underwent an undeniable change following the alleged post resurrection appearance of Christ. Immediately following his crucifixion, they hid it in fear of their lives. Following the resurrection, they took to the streets, boldly proclaimed the resurrection despite intensifying persecution. That counts for sudden and dramatic change. If it was certainly not financial gain, they gave up everything they had to preach the resurrection, including their lives. The second line 
line of resur the second line of evidence concerns the conversion of key skeptics, most notably Paul and James, the brother of Jesus. Paul was of his own omission a violent persecutor of the early church after what he described as an encounter with the resurrected Christ. Paul went underwent an immediate and drastic change from a vicious persecutor to of the church to one of its most its prolific and selfless defenders. Like many early Christians, Paul suffered impoverishment, persecutions, beatings, imprisonment, and execution for his didn't mass commitment to his, to Christ's resurrection. James was skeptical, although not as hostile as Paul. A purported post-resurrection encounter with Christ turned him into an inimitable in believer. We still have what scholars generally accept to be one of his letters to the early church. Like Paul, James suffered and was and died from a testament, a fact which attacks to the series. The books of Acts and Josephus Antiquities of the Jews Use 20 I XX IX1. The third and fourth evidence in attestation concern attestation to the empty tomb and the fact that the resurrection took root in Jew faced it took root in Jerusalem. Jesus was publicly executed and buried in Jerusalem. It would have been impossible for faith in his resurrection to take root in the city that he was executed in if his body was still in the tomb where the Sanhedrin could exhume it, put it on public display, and exhume it. A host. Instead, the Sanhedrin accused the disciples of stealing the body, apparently in the to explain its disappearance. But this is untenable for what we already saw in the first line of evidence that got questions presented. How do we explain the fact of the empty tomb? Um, there are s there are three most common expressions. First, the disciples stole the body. If they, if this were the case, then they would have known when the resurrection was the host. They would not, there, they would not, therefore, be so willing to suffer and die for it. Right. See the first line of evidence. All of the profession eyewitnesses would have known that they hadn't really seen Christ and were therefore lying. With so many conspirators, surely someone would have confessed, if not, not to end his own suffering. Offering than at least to end the suffering of his friends and family. The first generation of Christians were absolutely brutalized, especially, the f especially following the, 16 the 64 AD fire of Rome, in which he allegedly in order to make room for ex the expansion of his palace, but blamed on Christians in order to you know, exalt himself. At as the, as Cornelius Tacitus recounted as in the annals of Imperial Rome, um, Nero fastened, published just a generation after the fire, Nero fastened the guilt and influence the most exquisite torture of classes hated for their embodied, um, called Christians by the populace. Christus suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of, of our procurators, Pot and Jaspan, in the most in the most mischievous superstition, this checked for the moment again broke out in Judea, for the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful for every part of the world find their center. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty upon their infamy. Then upon, an immense multitude was convicted not so much with of the crime of firing the city as of hatred against mankind. Mockery of every sort was used to the death. Yeah, you know, illuminated. And if the disciples didn't steal the body, how else do we explain it? Some have suggested that Christ faked his death and later escaped the tomb. This is patently absurd. According to the eyewitness testimony, when Christ was beaten, tortured, lacerated, and stabbed, he suffered internal damage, massive blood loss, asphyxiation, and a spear through his heart. There is no good reason to to believe that Jesus Christ could survive such an ordeal, I have such an ordeal, fake his death, sit in a tomb for three days and three nights without medical intention, food or water, remove the massive tomb stone which sealed his tomb, escape undetected without leaving behind a trail of blood, convince hundreds of eyewitnesses that he was resurrected from the dead and
in good health and then disappear without a trace. Such a notion is ridiculous. In the fifth line of evidence for Jesus' resurrection, the peculiarity of eyewitness testimony in all of the major resurrection narratives, women are credited with as the first and primary witnesses. This would be an odd invention, since in both the ancient Jewish and Roman cultures, women were sincerely disesteemed. Their testimony was regarded as insubstantial and dismissible. Given this fact, it is highly unlikely that any perpetrators in a hope of a hoax in the first century detail would elect women to be their primary sources. Of all the male disciples who claimed to see Jesus resurrected, if they were all lying, why did they make pick the the most ill-perceived, distrusted witnesses they could find? Dr. William Lane Craig explained, when you understand the role of women in first century Jewish society, what's really extraordinary is that this empty tomb should feature women as the discoverers of the empty tomb in the first place. Women were on a very low rung of this social ladder in first century Israel. The old rabbinical saying says, Let the words of the law be burned rather than delivered to women. And blessed is he whose children are male, but woe to him whose children are female. Women's testimony was regarded as so worthless that they weren't even allowed to serve as legal witnesses in a Jewish court of law. In light of all this, it's absolutely remarkable that the chief witnesses to in the empty tomb are these women. <clears throat> a later legendary account would have certainly portrayed male disciples destroying the tomb, Peter or John, for example. <clears throat> the fact that women are the first witnesses to the empty tomb is the most pros is the most prob possibly explained that by the reality that, like it or not, that they were discoverers of the empty tomb. The gospel. This shows the gospel writers faithfully recorded what happened, even if it was embarrassing. This bespeaks, bespeaks to the history of the tr tradition rather than its legendary s status. Dr. William Lane Craig, quoted by Lee Strobel, the Christ for Her Christ Grand Rapids, Zondervan, 1998, page 203. In summary, the lines of evidence, the dishonorable sincerity of the eyewitness, Eyewitnesses, the conversion and demonstrable sincerity of key antagonists and skeptics turned martyrs, the faith of the fact of the empty tomb, enemy excitation to the empty tomb, and the fact that all of this took place in Jerusalem, where the faith in the resurrection began and thrived, and the testimony of women, the significance of such testimony given the historical context, all of these strongly attest the historicity of the resurrection. We encourage our readers to, th to thoughtfully consider these evidence. What do these suggest to you? The evidence for the resurrection. Sir Lionel's declaration, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is so well overwhelming that it compels acceptance by proof which leaves absolutely no room for doubt. Um, at the sign won't mind if I'm a few minutes late, surely. Now the download page from Alan Parr. Have you ever wondered if, if the resurrection of Jesus Christ was some myth or some fable made up that was to pass, that was passed down to us to believe? I mean, how do we really make sure that it actually happened? There are five undeniable reasons why you must believe in the miraculous resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number one, the precautions of the Romans in order to present prevent Jesus' body from being stolen, they took three precautions. These are listed in Matthew 27, 64-66. A guard, they posted a squad of 10-30 to 30 soldier, soldiers to protect and guard the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. A stone, they placed a stone and weighing close to 3,500 pounds, that's around the weight of a Lamborghini, a Venador, I think, and get in front of the the tomb preventing people from coming in or out. A seal. They placed a Roman seal across the stone so that it, if tampered with, was punishable by death. The faith of the disciples. Before Jesus' crucifixion, they, the disciples were fearful and ran for their lives. 14, Matthew 14:50. 14, I don't know. I think this might be an error. I think you might mean Mark 1450, 
after the resurrection, they became so fearless, willing to get beaten, burned, beheaded, and sodden, to stoned, and crucified. Question, why would someone risk their lives for something they know is a lie? I, Jesus' post-resurrection appearance says the Bible teaches that Jesus spent 40 additional days on earth after his resurrection, making convincing proofs that he was alive. Acts 1-3, in addition to peer, to multiple multiple times to his disciples, Paul recounts when Jesus appeared to over 500 people at one time who were still alive to give the testimony at the time of Paul's writing, 1 Corinthians 15-6. Number four, secular history confirms if the Bible is the only book that that recorded the resurrection, people might criticize us for circular reasoning, and, but it's well documented in secular history books such as Flavius Josephus, the, world's, the words of Flavius Josephus, 18.3.3, Thomas Arnold, History of Rome, and there were also some atheists who set out to disprove the resurrection but it ended up backfiring on it because all the resurrection evidence is on the sides of the resurrection and as a result these three atheists ended up becoming Christians. There was Frank Morrison, author of Who Moved the Stone, Lee Strobel, author of The Case for Christ, and Josh McDowell, author of The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And the fifth if the piece of proof for Jesus' resurrection is the missing body was never found. If Jesus rose from the dead, and then the Romans could have just produced the body. They, body. they could have just sent someone to go to the tomb and fetch the body for them, put it on display, and, and show that Jesus was still dead, thus destroying Christianity forever. But the body was never found in the doom because it wasn't there, because Jesus wasn't dead anymore. He was alive, he had rose from the dead. Key takeaway.